Hey guys, welcome back. Hayley here. So in today's video, I want to unbox some anime figures from Gacha Games. But I also thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about Gacha Games and reflect on Gacha Games and maybe introduce you to the world of Gachas and the good and the bad things about it. <laughs> so if you've at all looked at buying anime figures, you will find that a huge, huge, huge portion of the anime figures that come out come solely from gacha games. If you're not already addicted to a gacha game, here's a quick rundown. The name comes from the Japanese word gachapon, which refers to like the little vending machines that you can play in Japan where you put a coin in and you'll get like a random prize. So you don't know what you're gonna get. And generally, one of the key hooks in a gacha game is it's the same. You'll pay an in-game currency, one that you probably can buy with real money, and in exchange, you will receive like a random character or a random item. And some of these are really rare and exclusive and look really good. So the general trick is like your super rare five star or SSSR characters will generally have like the best art, the best looking outfits. They'll have like an animated live 2D portrait and all these yummy reasons why you want it. So as an example, in one of the gacha games, Fate, this is like your your average three star character, snooze fest, just a bloke in a hood. And then here's your five star, beautiful Jean Alter. Look at that art, mm, look at the lighting, the rose petals, oh my God. And basically this idea prints money for the game developers because you creating so much value for someone, it's basically gambling, but you don't have to give them anything. You're just giving them pixels. It's just art that you commissioned to have done. And so it's hugely, hugely successful. Usually you can play most of the gacha games without ever spending a cent, but you're doing so with some lame people in your party and you probably want to spend some money to get some really, you know, pretty cool characters to uh, come along for the ride instead. So I wrote my little nerd finger up because I wanted to look at Google Trends to see who the big players are. And we kind of matched this with like how many figures come out. So full disclosure, not a data scientist. So I'm probably not using Google Trends correctly. So look at this graph. You're probably curious who is the yellow trend. And this is Genshin Impact. You've probably heard of Genshin Impact. It's insanely popular. But taking Genshin Impact away, we can see that FGO, the blue line, has been pretty strongly on top for the last five years, but recently the others have caught up. We've got Azure Lane, which is red in the back. It's been very steady, a very steady, solid base this entire time. Green, which is Arknights, got very popular when it came out. Purple, which is Blue Archive, is also quickly rising in popularity in the end. But you can see it's just like a very competitive space now, but also none of these gachas come even close to Genshin Impact's popularity since its launch. Of course, Google Trends doesn't directly relate to like number of active players or installs or profits they make, but it gives you an idea of, I guess, how mainstream these gacha games are. So before we dive into unboxing a figure from each of the gachas we just talked about, I did want to show off something related to video games. Mech DIY have very kindly sent me the MiU Mini Plus. Recently, I've noticed a surge of popularity in little handhelds that can emulate retro games. I've been playing around with this for a while and it's been great. I love the form factor. It's so small and tiny, it just fits in any bag easily. It has all the essentials, a USB-C port, micro SD card slot for games and a headphone jack. It can emulate games up to around the PlayStation 1, which is great because it's perfect for the Game Boy Advance games. So if you're sick of all these gacha games, you can play through a huge, huge, huge catalog of games on this with a decent battery life and it's very portable as well. I was originally going to play one of the GBA Fire Emblem games, but then I couldn't decide which one to play because there's a lot of opinions online about it. So instead, I've been enjoying playing Advance Wars 
which is also developed by the same studio anyway. You can check out the Mio Mini Plus and a range of other handheld devices at Mac DIY below. I'll have a link in the description. So first up, we are going to talk about Azure Lane. So Azure Lane is all about building your fleet of ship girls, which is a very, very similar idea to the earlier game Can Call. I kind of feel like if you've ever had that thing happen where you say a joke but somebody else says it louder and they get the laughs, I feel like that's what Kanko feels about Azure Lane. <laughs> I haven't played Azure Lane and I tried to look up the plot. I don't really know what's going on. I think it's partly historical, but there's aliens and I think there's like some references to World War II battles, but they have some very cool designs. All of their battleships are usually very well endowed, I'd say. As for the gameplay, I'm so sorry, Azure Laners. It does kind of look boring. Oh. <laughs> so if I were to try and sum Azure Lane up, I kind of feel like Azure Lane is a little bit trashy among the gachas. It's kind of like the hooters of gachas, but they're proud about it, you know? So the Azure Lane figure that I wanted to take a look at today is Alter's Le Triumphant, one seventh scale. I think the Triumphant is a French submarine. This figure comes in two versions. There's the lightweight version, which retails for 17,000 yen. That's this one. There's also a heavyweight version where she comes with gun attachments that you can put aside her. Honestly, this figure kind of makes me sigh. I just basically regret pre-ordering this figure, so I'm gonna try and like show you still, but I already know I'm gonna sell her. I was just drawn in from the prototype images, from how beautiful the eyes and hair and everything looks. She just looks so angelic that I bought it. But then I knew when she arrived and I opened it that I probably shouldn't have done it. But yeah, but despite that, Let's take a look because she is still a very, very pretty figure. So this figure is beautiful. Alta is known for their fantastic quality and they have done that with this figure. The sculpt is really, really nice. I love the hair and the cape sculpt, but the cape doesn't fit into the base fully, which is kind of annoying. The base is also a little boring. It's just a disc. I guess it looks like a flight deck. There's some really nice coloring in the shading, especially in the cape and on the inside of the cape where there's some really nice metallic details. I think she has a really, really nice face and hair that frames it and she looks really cute, but I feel like I was drawn in by the original photo because of the face and the hair framing it. But like looking at it in person, it's nice, but it is just another like, anime figure. So unfortunately, I am going to sell this one. If you like Lee Triumphant and you like this figure, I highly recommend it. Alter has done a really good job with the figure, but I'm just not going to keep her in my collection personally. And unfortunately, she absolutely binned on the aftermarket. This figure can go for as low as 12,000 yen I saw on the auctions. Woo! gonna be making a loss on this one. Bad day for the French Navy. But in general, I don't think that figure was a very good representation of Azure Lane figures. They're usually pretty lewd, usually have big boat titties. I mean, sex sells. <laughs> and uh, I actually originally had Alters Formidable on pre-order and this was one of my most anticipated figures and uh, I ended up canceling her. Like I did a total 180. I think I just one day looked at the figure and I thought, ah, it's a lot. It's a lot of money. And it's also like the design suddenly felt like too much. And I think I was also drawn in by, by the whole vibe and the kind of gothic Lolita-ness of the design. And I don't think I actually want it in real life in my hands. So yeah, that's Azure Lane. The next sketch we're gonna take aim at is Arknights. So the elevator pitch for Arknights is that all of the characters in the game have animal ears. They're like animal girls. There is a whole backstory about a post-apocalyptic virus, but it's basically the same story. Like you're, you're collecting your harem of characters that you like, and then you send them onto missions. The Arknights gameplay is tower defense, 
And I actually really liked what I played of Arknights. I found it very, very fun to actually play. It's definitely a classier game than Azure Lane. There's actually a good amount of male characters in the game as well, which is awesome. And lastly, I think the art style is super cool and edgy and a nice amount of cute characters as well. And the designs have a nice mix of like tactical and like magic fantasy elements. If I were to sum it up in one word, I think Arknights is like the overachiever. It doesn't have that like real warship or real guns to fall back on, but I think it's carved out a really nice aesthetic and a really nice gameplay in the market. So from Arknights today, we have the W scale from uh, Hypergriff. So this is W. She's like a demon girl. Although I've seen people call her like cockroach girl as well. I love her design. I love the gray hair and the red horns. I'm not an active Ark Knights player. I played a bit when it first came out, but I just stumbled across this figure online and I could not stop thinking about it. I love this character design and the figure. So I picked her up. She was 16,000 yen. This figure was manufactured by Hypergriff, which is actually the same company that releases the game. So I don't know if they actually made this in-house or if there's actually like a secret figure manufacturer on board. Usually they'll just hire like another figure company to make figures of their characters, but I'm not sure what's going on here. As for the figure itself, I am very, very impressed with it. My favorite thing about this figure is the entire composition. I love her pose and the dynamicness of her pose with all the, the two guns she's got and all her little bits of her outfit flowing everywhere. And I think it looks really, really nice with the base. The base is so sick. It's just like a pile of concrete, but they've added extra pipes sticking out. There's this like half a pipe on the side. It's very, very cool. The sculpt is really nice, maybe not as crisp as I've seen from other manufacturers, but good enough. The only thing for me is I think the colors are fine. I don't think they're bad, I just don't think they're great. Despite that, I really, really like this figure. I, I, I think she's so cute. She's definitely ranks up there for me in terms of gacha figures in my collection from gachas that I don't know much about. <laughs> She's basically an OC for me at this point, but she'll fit really nice into my like tactical, tactical tech wear shelf. So if we look at some of the other Arknight figures, there are so many nice ones. I think Arknight figures are generally super, super sick and cool. My ethos does a couple of really cool ones. I'd actually, you know, consider buying if I saw a good price. I love 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 apex's blaze figure as well so a lot of cool art knights figures i think they they make some of the best figures on the market just a quick aside on like my <laughs> actual personal opinion on gotchas so i used to play gotchas like i'd want to play gotchas and i spent quite a lot of time playing mainly fgo i cared a lot about rolling for five star characters and i did spend some money, uh, I, I was always pretty good and I'd be like, oh, I'll just buy the figure instead, <laughs> instead of putting money into the game. And none of the other games really catched on with me when I tried to play them. These days, I do feel like if I'm gonna sink some time into a game, I'd much rather do that on like an actual PC game or another video game. And honestly, it does feel like the market is getting so saturated with so many more gachas coming out that it does feel kind of hard to keep up and how to choose what matters and what doesn't. So for me, I've kind of settled into a piece of like just calling bankruptcy on gachas. Uh, to me, when I'm looking at gacha figures, I very much just look at them as original characters. I can't deny like gacha games have some of the best designs out there. Um, and that's probably because they're hiring some of the best artists in the industry to design these characters. And so, I actually like a lot of the artists and I learn about a lot of the artists from gacha art and gacha characters. For example, I love OTS 14. I love Ask, the illustrator's illustrations. And so I really like OTS 14 and all of the art to do with that. Could I tell you a thing about OTS 14? 
no, but I still uh, would buy an OTS 14 figures. Spoiler, that's what's coming up next. And that's okay that I don't know anything about OTS 14. At the end of the day, still a lovely figure and I still love collecting original characters. But yeah, that's kind of my ramble on my take on how I feel about buying gacha characters from gachas I know nothing about. <laughs> But enough of me rambling, I did want to talk about Girls Frontline next because I really want to show you this OTS 14 figure that I bought. But Girls Frontline, so the concept here is that all of the girls are guns, all the guns are girls. And I like it, it's a very simple concept that works well. Again, I think this is set in a post-apocalyptic world where these girls called tactical dolls T-dolls uh, fight and some of these T-dolls are evil, etc. I feel like the gameplay looks a little boring for me. I don't really vibe too much with these games where like all the characters are just shooting and attacking automatically and then every now and then you just like push a button to do a special ability. The art style is very cool. A little bit trashy at times, they do hinge on the like damaged versions and like parts of their outfit are now hella revealing, but at times they have some very nice and elegant art as well. If I had to classify it, I feel like it would be kind of the edgier one, you know, because it's got like guns and like robot warfare and also like some really sick tactical outfits and I kind of feel like they did it first, that vibe. Anyway, I cannot wait to talk about the OTS 14 figure uh, by Apex. So like Formidable by Ulta, this was one of my most anticipated figures from last year, but I didn't cancel this one. <laughs> this figure is gorgeous and the art that it's based on is so beautiful as well. I just had to pick it up. She's pretty expensive. She retails for 18,000 yen but I'm very excited to show you this gorgeous figure. This figure does the original art justice. It looks just like she walked out of that artwork. The sculpt is amazing. The draping of her hair and her dress is next level. The shawl wrapped around her shoulders is real kind of fluffy fabric, which is a nice touch. And some of the details in her jewelry and shoes is so well done. The coloring is really nice as well. She's got this vibrant shimmery red as her dress color and they really nailed translating the face onto this figure. There is a box behind her and you guessed it, in it is a very nice OTS 14. Yeah, this is just such an elegant and lovely figure. I love her so much. There is actually also a second colorway, I think coming out, if not already out, but I don't think it looks as good. I think the red is clutch, is key. I love this figure and I actually recently sold some of my other formal dress figures so she doesn't really match anything that I have but I just like this so much I'm gonna keep it anyway. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I highly recommend this figure. Very impressed with Apex. Looking at some of the available girls frontline figures, I feel like they're split generally into two camps. They either have the like very elegant formal dress version. I feel like they do a lot of dressy stuff because it fits with the story, but then you also have like a very trashy side to the girls frontline figures. Oh, but then you also have this subset of the like super super cool tactical girls like i think ump 45 is one that i like all right next up let's talk about fate grand order now not to be biased i am a big fan of fate grand order and fate so fate grand order the gacha game is based off of the fate anime but it also makes for a really good gacha game. <laughs> so fate lore aside, the concept is pretty straightforward. Figures from history are reincarnated to help fight for the Holy Grail. And in the case of Fate Grand Order, like multiple Holy Grails. And I, I cannot stress enough like how many Holy Grails there are. There is an insane amount of story associated with uh, each of the Grails, so much so that they've 
it's been spin off into like different animes and movies as well. The gameplay here is turn-based, card-based combat. I think generally Fate has some really really cool character designs. Some are really bad but a lot of them are really good and I think this is because there's like all of history that you could just use in making a character makes for some very creative and interesting characters. So if I had to classify Fate out of all of the games, it's like the old guard, you know, like they've been doing it their way for five years and they're not gonna change. Like the international servers are lags behind the JP servers ages. There's a lot of new gacha features that you don't get in Fate and they don't care because they're, they're Fate. <laughs> like live with it. And with that, let's jump to the Fate figure for today. And I'm so excited. It is Quez Q's Shootin' Doji. I've forgotten the name of this skin. I think it's from like a Halloween event. But yeah, I I love Shootin' Doji. I love her character design. She's one of my favorite Fate characters of all. There's just something about her that's like so aesthetically perfect. And I already have a Max Factory shooting figure and I love that figure so much. And I know I've said this twice this video, but like legit, this was one of my most anticipated figures from last year. I think I actually have like a top nine grid of the figures I was excited for. And yeah, they're all on there. But I think secretly this one's the one I, I, was, I was most excited about, you know? <laughs> And I'm happy to announce that Quez Q delivered on this beautiful shooting doji figure. I love this figure, it is gorgeous. I love the composition of it. I think her costume looks really good with how she's posing and the big uh, clothing elements behind her and, and all these extra things flowing off her. It just all looks really pleasing to the eye at once. Quez Q's done a really nice job with the sculpt. There's some really nice details in her sleeves and her outfit that you can see sculpted in. And then they've enhanced that with the way that they've painted all of the metallic details. Yeah, everything's just really, really well done. I love her sharp nails and I'm pleased to say they nailed her face. I think Shootin' Doji has a tough face to get right, but this one is so good. I am very happy with this figure. She is now living in like the top shelf of my collection, which is where the creme de la creme goes. And I had another dilemma, which is I really like the caster shooting doji figure that is up for pre-order and it's so expensive, but with how good this is, I don't need that one, you know, cause this shooting doji is so good and I have the Max Factory one and they're already carrying so much weight that I don't even need the cast one, which is good because I saved myself like 30,000 yen. So yeah, I highly recommend this figure. She's so cute. So taking a look at fake grand order figures, firstly, there are a lot. This is like an old gacha. And generally, most of the Fate figures are very, very impressive and very, very expensive. They generally go really big and the character designs are very cool. And there's a lot of cool elements. And yeah, Fate figures are generally super cool, maybe more historically leaning in the design as opposed to like tactical wear. But yeah, very, very cool stuff. Fate figures were kind of my gateway figures into figure collecting, so not surprising that I'm a fan. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is hugely, hugely successful, probably more than any other game on this list. It's also the one that feels the most like an actual game. It's one that you can play on consoles and PC, and it actually has gameplay. <laughs> I think the Genshin character designs are really good. It leans more into kind of your traditional fantasy look, but I think the variety is a little less than in other gachas. I don't know how much I need to summarize Genshin Impact. I feel like the odds are you've either just played it yourself or you've already heard all about it. If I had to sum it down into kind of one phrase, I feel like it's the TikTok of gachas. Like it's popped up relatively recently. It's insanely popular. It's blown up and it's just invaded everything. Like you will not go to a convention without seeing like 
pretty much all the big Genshin characters being cosplayed. And for our last figure today from Genshin Impact, we have the adorable Barbara by Kotobukiya. This is a 1-7 figure. She retailed for 17,000 yen and I do have a gripe which is that I didn't get the Kotobukiya exclusive faceplate because I didn't pre-order her from like the right place but luckily I can live with that. I don't think I would have displayed her with the exclusive faceplate anyway. This figure is so cute. I can't resist. I feel like Barbara is definitely up there for one of the cutest Genshin characters in terms of the design. I just love it so much. I couldn't resist picking up this figure. So here's the figure. It's beautiful. I want to talk about the base first. I'm such a big fan of it. It's got grass, which is pretty common, but I love the details of adding stones and flowers and a little bit of water and also the sides making it like dirt and rock instead of just a plain green really elevates the figure. Barbara herself is beautiful. They captured her character perfectly. The outfit details are so well done and so precise. Looks like she walked straight out of the game. They also captured her face really well. I love her wink and I think it was the perfect and most adorable pose. Her hair is kind of muted in its coloring I'm actually a fan of that because Barbara's hair is pretty pale, but maybe it could have used a bit more pop. The most controversial thing for me is I'm really torn on the extra music notes you can add. Part of me just thinks the figure looks better without them. They're a little bit tacky. And also, the music notes aren't right. There are too many notes in that bar for a 2-4 time signature. Come on, Kotobukiya, get with it. Anyway, this is such an awesome figure. Like, Kotobukiya is just such a safe pair of hands. With any figure, they'll just always deliver beautiful quality. She also retails for like 16 to 17,000 yen, which I think is a really nice price for her. And I appreciate it because I think some other companies would probably charge above 20,000 or somewhere about like 23 or 24,000 for like equivalent quality. Finally, let's take a look at some of the Genshin Impact figures out there. They are generally very cute and I feel like most of them are by Kotobukiya. I'm surprised we don't have more Genshin Impact figures for how popular the game is though. I will say that. So just thinking about the future of gachas, I do think they're here to stay unless there's some big crackdown on gambling or in-game loot boxes. So I think we're gonna see more and more gachas pop up with fantastic character designs and extremely mid gameplay. I mean, personally, I feel like I see a new gacha every like, one hobby announcement video. I'm like, oh, what, who, who, what is this game? Oh, it's a gacha, nice. And honestly, I really appreciate gachas as a source of like OC characters. I feel like gachas inject like steroids into the anime art world because they're literally trying to get artists to draw, to like almost weaponize art and the character design so that you draw something that's so gorgeous and beautiful and whatever that people want to spend money so they have that jpeg of it <laughs> in a video game you know i am interested to see which of the gachas stay long term i feel like fgo has the entire type moon franchise behind it and it has been popular for so long but like the google trends kind of show that it's it's on its way to trending down um, and some of these newer games like azure lanes and girl frontline seem to be going strong but you know we'll see if they have the staying power for like another five years I feel like we'll typically see the volume of anime figures for, for a gacha, like ebb and flow with the uh, popularity of it. So yeah, you know, we can keep a pulse on the gacha world with that. But anyway, that is all I had for this video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of like crazy dive into the gacha world. Let me know if you're hopelessly addicted to a gacha. If so, which one? And yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.